Tyson Fury, should he have won Fighter of the Year? Now, I've seen a lot of people saying that they felt that Tyson Fury should have won Fighter of the Year award this year, considering his comeback, considering the fact that, in a lot of people's minds, he beat Deontay Wilder back in December the 1st, and considering he came back, had two fights against journeymen. Re, re, let's say they're journeymen. Let's face fact, they weren't great. And came back from alcohol, drink drugs, mental health, depression on the verge of suicide. Had to lose all that weight. Came back and, in many people's minds, should be the WBC heavyweight champion right now. A lot of people feel that Tyson Fury should have won fight of the year. Now, I like Tyson Fury. I thought he beat Deontay Wilder. But I'm not one of those people who thinks that he should have won fighter of the year. And I'll tell you why. Because Tyson Fury, what he came back from is nothing short of incredible. And he has won the Ring Magazine's comeback of the year, which I think is nothing less than he deserves. Because it really is quite incredible to think that at this stage last year, there was pictures of him looking so overweight, grossly out of shape. And he was only really starting the comeback trail this time last year. And I don't think anybody really would have foreseen a year later how much progress he would have made because you know you've seen fighters you know come back from less and not been able to make much progress in a year you just you don't see it so for him to come back and you know he looked rusty let's not beat around the bush here against Sefer Safiri he really looked you know really slow that's a fact he looked slow he didn't look like the reflexes were quite there he looked a bit better against PNA got the rounds in but he didn't look like he even had any power to hurt Safiri looks like he was you know, a bit like Riddick Bow. I'm not saying he was as bad as Riddick Bow, but he looked like kind of like Riddick Bow in the Andrew Galata rematch. Just, you know, half of himself. Just like he was, he took something out of himself. Now, the Deontay Wilder fight, he didn't, he wasn't at his best. Let's say that was his 65, 70% Tyson Fury. The, we're comparing him to his best when he beat Klitschko. So let's say he's 65, 70% off that. Or, you know, he's that, that's what he was, go. In, as opposed to being, you know, in the best. What I'm saying is he wasn't quite the Tyson Fury. I was making it sound real complicated there. He wasn't the Tyson Fury. He was 60% of himself, we'll say, as of the Tyson Fury that beat Klitschko. Finally got it out there. But yeah, he was nowhere near his best against Deontay Wilder. And for my money, he was controlling that fight. It was close. There was close rounds. But I still thought Tyson Fury was doing the better work in all them rounds. And he was nicking the rounds. And he was taking the rounds. The only thing that really held him back in that fight was the two knockdowns. Now, the 12th round knockout, knockdown, that was some knockdown. The ninth one was a very silly knockdown. It was kind of near the back of the head. It was a legit knockdown. Let's, I've already said that, but it was that was a silly knockdown that didn't need to happen. And had that not have happened, we'd have a WBC heavyweight champion, Tyson Fury. The fact of the matter is that he is competing with guys like Josh Warrington, who, you know, prior to this, I didn't think was very... I thought Josh Warrington was good. I thought Josh Warrington was very good, but I didn't think he was as good as he as he's proved himself to be. I thought Lee Selby would beat him, not because I think Lee Selby is that good. I've never rated Lee Selby that highly, but I thought that he was better than Josh Warrington from a technical point of view. Prove me wrong, Lee, I, he beat the crap out of Lee Selby. And I thought Carl Frampton is, I would put him ahead of Lee Selby, so I thought Carl Frampton would beat Josh Warrington. Same thing didn't happen. Josh Warrington beat Carl Frampton. So, Carl, so Josh Warrington... He deserves a shout, I'd say, ahead of Tyson Fury as fighter of the year. But no one, and I mean no one, is touching Alexander Usek this year. He started this year with a good win over Myers Breedis. It was a very close fight. It was a good fight to watch. It was a great fight. It was very close. Started the year off with a good win against Breedis. Absolutely took more accuracy of a part. And I was actually pretty sure that that fight would be close. It wasn't. It was anything but Usek just put a hurting on him. He just schooled him. From start to finish, barely lost the round. I think the only round he lost was the round when he got rocked. But I think that was the fourth or fifth. So barely lost the round against Gassiev. Undisputed cruiserweight champion. The first guy since Evander Holyfield. The first man ever to hold all four cruiserweight titles. Because the WBO wasn't around when Holyfield was champion. And then goes to the UK in his own backyard and beats Tony Bell. He knocks him out in a great win. Usek is fighter of the year. And as good as Tyson Fury's been on his comeback. And he deserves comeback of the year. He's definitely not the fighter of the year for me, for my money. You you can't give that to anyone else other than Alexander Usyk. Alexander Usyk has stood amongst all of them this year. He's been a fantastic fighter. It's been fantastic to watch him. And it'd be interesting to see what he does next year, whether he moves up to heavyweight in his next fight. Eddie Hearn's been talking about April in the States. It'd be interesting to see if it's a heavyweight or if it's going to be maybe one more fight at cruiserweight. Who else is there at cruiserweight? Dorothy Coase, Dennis Lebedev. They don't really interest me, them fights. I think Dortico's actually, he's tied up in the World Box, World Boxing Super Series. 
So yeah, who else is there? There's not really anybody else you'd really say that you'd be interested in seeing uh, Usyk fight a cruiserweight. Not really anybody. So I think he should move up to heavyweight. I think that, uh, you know, he'd be a great addition to the heavyweight division. And I think Usyk will, he'll find his feet fairly quick in that division. But in terms of kind of some of the other awards that are going there, because the Ring Magazine, you know, they do their yearly award. I can't really argue with any of them. The only one I would maybe argue with is the Naona Inoue knockout of Juan Carlos Payal. I thought the Dylan White knockout of Lucas Brown was a little bit more spectacular. They're both good knockouts, but if you ask me, I would have put that ahead slightly, but that's a little nitpick. But yeah, those are my thoughts on this. Uh, Tyson Fury is great as he's been. He deserves comeback of the year, but I don't think fire of the year. I think that he's, who has he fought? He fought two journeymen, and then he had a draw with Deontay Wilder. I thought he won, but still he was down twice, and he had a draw, but Definitely, I think that the rematch happening next year, if it happens, if it does happen, which I hope it does, I think Tyson Fury will win. Depends where it is, but I still think Tyson Fury will win the rematch with Deontay Wilder. So yeah, this is a bit of a long video. Um, sorry I haven't got the uploads in much this week. There has just been hardly any news coming my way. It's not that I haven't wanted to, it's just that there's just been hardly any news coming. So I haven't really had anything to work on to make videos, so... Hopefully in the new year we can get this channel rolling and we can get it going and uh, hopefully we can get we can get game from where we are. You know, we've got a good foundation, good starting point, so hopefully we can uh, improve, keep going and uh, we can make something in the new year. So enjoy this video, nice little long video. Might see if I can get another one out later. Um not unboxing, I might just talk about something. We'll see. Um we'll see about that anyway. But anyway, those are my thoughts on this and yeah, feel free to leave yours down below. Who do you think is fire of the year? Me for my money, Alexander Usek all the way. But thanks for listening. And I'm out.